to fund the police. Fund them. Fund them. Joe Biden did his best to try to appeal to conservatives during Tuesday night's State of the Union and managed to both fail in that effort and piss off progressives in the Democratic base at the same time. Great job, Joe. Let's take a look at the reaction from Fox News. The problem is with that speech, he didn't say how he was going to fix anything. He recited a bunch of Republican talking points, but he didn't say how he would fix. But this did not look like gravitas to me. At times he looked lost. He was squinting. It, it was more like the stare of the union. He kept looking off, trying to figure things out. And what you just mentioned is something from the mid 90s that everyone who follows political history can can recall right. the era of big government is over. Right. Why was he incapable of delivering a memorable line like that at such a critical point for the country and for the world? The address was uninspiring because there was no pivot. There was no change in terms of policy or approach. This was the most out of the touch State of the Union speech that I have ever heard. He gave them exactly what they wanted. In the words of Nikki Haley, these were Republican talking points. He championed the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which was ultimately a giveaway to their donors. He begged conservatives to work with him. What more could they possibly want? They'll never be satisfied. And this part, this part was great. It feels like President Biden and his party have sent us back in time to the late 70s and early 80s, when runaway inflation was hammering families, a violent crime wave was crashing our cities, and the Soviet army was trying to redraw the world map. The early 80s, really. When Ronald Reagan was president, that's where he's taking us back to and you're, you're dissatisfied. Isn't that what you want? What's with all the creepy Reagan merch then? Isn't that your guy? He's your guy, right? What is happening? But the most talked about moment from the speech was when he did this. We should all agree the answer is not to defund the police. Right. It's to fund the police. Fund them. Fund them. Man, that, that sucks. One of the issues with the debate around defunding the police is that most people don't really know what it is. And in part, it's because of conservative media, the same media that Biden is trying to win over here. They're hoping that by saying this, it'll get people off their backs. And if you don't know what defund the police is, that's okay. It's this really extreme idea where we reimagine how we do policing in this country. And instead of the police taking care of every issue in a city, those funds are broken up and reallocated, so we have a bigger investment in social services and in preventative care and in treatment instead of the police department, which might just focus then on violent crime, can just focus on that. And people who are trained professionals in other areas and aspects of life can respond to other scenarios. But it's being framed by the media as this total abolition of police when it's not. That is a separate debate. The amount of money going toward police departments and cities has steadily increased over the past few decades. And this is just an idea that says, hey, maybe we should divvy that up with other aspects of the community. And on the heels of one of the deadliest years in the country for police killings, Joe Biden says this at the State of the Union, which elicited this response from Cori Bush. Ultimately, defund the police is really just enhanced reform. That's it. And that's something that most Americans support. 58% of all Americans agree that policing in this country needs major changes. And that number goes up to 88% when you poll black Americans. And black voters are the core of the Democratic base. And you're selling them out here. You're abandoning them. Biden's ultimately just attacking a slogan for an applause line. And in doing so, he tries to appeal to conservatives. And they stood up. They clapped. But what he's ultimately doing is further confusing the American people. Because people are going to pounce on this and use this to further the narrative they've already been pushing about defunding the police. And ultimately, right-wing media saw right through it. I'm not going to let the media strategy of contrasting the squad with Joe Biden to somehow reconstitute the myth of his moderation, mm. right? you got to give credit to the squad because they're stupid, 
They're wrong. They're unforgivable. But at least they're consistent to their principles. This jackass did, was, didn't do a thing when cops were being killed. Now his numbers are in the tank, 37%. Oh, I want to fund the police. Okay, yes. that's nonsense. If you believe it, you're stupid. He's <laughs> just trying to sound like he de- likes the police. He's actually not trying to fight crime. What we watched there was fake. And for anybody applauding him supporting law enforcement, you're an idiot. And there are a ton of other issues that Democratic voters get mobilized by that went totally unaddressed in the State of the Union. Biden spent very little time talking about addressing climate change. He didn't talk about fixing health care. In fact, Biden hasn't mentioned a public option since he got elected in 2020. He made one fleeting reference to abortion, and he didn't even mention that the Supreme Court is poised to overturn Roe versus Wade this summer and what he thinks should be done to codify it in advance. And... Despite running on canceling student debt. For eliminating college debt, we're going to take care of this. And we can afford it. We're going to make sure you can wipe out your college debt as well. We give more help to racehorses than we do college students. Student debt should be forgiven for now. I'm going to eliminate a lot of your student debt if you, in fact, are if you come from a family less than 125 grand and you went to a a public university. I'm going to make sure that everybody in this generation gets ten thousand dollars knocked off of their student debt as we try to get out of this god awful pandemic. The next bill should forgive a minimum of ten thousand dollars of student debt for everybody with a debt when they pass this bill just right off the bat. I'm going to cut the cost of education for everyone. I'm going to fight to make sure the student debt crisis, which disproportionately affects African-Americans, we're going to immediately forgive now, immediately forgive now, and, and Nancy Amen. Pelosi put it in, $10,000 per person, any, any federal student loan. Forgive loans for any public college or a private HBCU graduate making less than a family, making less than $125,000 a year. Forgive the loans. Wipe them out completely. It wasn't brought up. And that's something he could do right now without Congress, and he just chooses not to. And now payments are set to resume in a couple months. Again, these are things that Democratic voters care about, and he didn't even mention them. All of this was ignored in favor of Republican light platitudes. And this is just another reminder of why this strategy is a failed one. They're never going to side with you. They do not care. They don't believe you when you say it, and they'll attack you if you don't. It's a lose-lose. Conservative media will just find new things to get mad at you about or call you a liar when you do say it. And conservative voters would rather sacrifice their firstborn to Baphomet than ever vote for you. And with a likely brutal midterms ahead, Joe Biden and the Democrats need all the help they can get. So just focus on the issues your voters care about. But... Maybe the worst criticism of all came from Tucker Carlson's show on Wednesday night. The young kid who has um, suffers from the diabetes and needs his insulin loved that. But again, even there was a missed moment for humanity, right? The president says, and it was his birthday yesterday. Well, then clue. Sing happy birthday. Yeah. Like, that's what we do. Like have a human moment.